we'd better learn how to create an array. F -sharp offers at least six different ways to do this and you'll need to be familiar with all of them to make the best use of arrays in your code. You can create an array from a literal, in other words specifying the actual values you want it to have in the let binding. This is obviously only suitable for small arrays. Array literals are bracketed by compound brackets made up of square brackets and vertical bar characters. We'll call these array clamps to emphasise the fact that arrays can't change in length. Elements are separated by semicolons. One step beyond that you can create an array using a comprehension. A comprehension can be a simple range or an arbitrary piece of code between the array clamps. Each value you want to include in the array must be yielded in that code. Then there are several functions in f -sharp's array module, which we'll be talking about much more later, that can create and populate an array. Array.create creates the array with values that are all the same. More usefully, Array.init creates an array whose values are calculated by some function which you specify as a parameter. To create an array of zeros, use Array.zeroCreate. Actually, what counts as a zero here is not as obvious as you might think, but we'll cover that in the demo. Finally, we can create an array from another array in a filtering or mapping operation, or we can do the same kinds of things from other collections, typically i enumerables. Let's demonstrate the various ways you can create an array in F -sharp. First, here's how to create one from a literal. We can send that to F -sharp Interactive. And here's the literal. If we put one entry per line, we can omit the semicolons. Again, select and send to F -sharp Interactive. And there we are. You can use a range. And there we have all the numbers between 1000 and 1020. You can pick the interval of the range simply by adding it between an additional set of double dots. And these ranges can even be floating point numbers. To do that we simply force the various literal numbers to be floating point numbers. Here's a simple array comprehension using a loop. Although that particular example could of course have been achieved simply using a range and an interval. So how much logic can we put between the array clamps? Well let's say we want to make an array containing the date of the last day of every month in a year. Again we use array clamps but we put some real code. The first day of the month is simply going to be a date time of the year i between 1 and 12 and the first day of the year. And we'll need to open the system namespace to make sure date time works. And then the last day of the month is the first day adding some days, taking the days in the month and one off so we don't go past the end and then the crucial point is that we then yield the value we've calculated. I'm going to reset F -sharp Interactive and just send that code and now let's try that for a particular year. Now since this is emitting dates we've got some quite verbose output but you can see we are indeed getting the last day of January, the last day of February 2015 and so forth. Array.create creates an array with all the elements set to a specific value, not generally very useful. The first parameter of Array.create is the number of elements we want to create and the second parameter is the value we want to give them. And there we get 103.3s.
Array dot zero create is also not hugely useful. Now we'll find that this won't work. And the reason is because it doesn't know the type to infer for the array. So in this case, we do actually need to specify a type. Interestingly, we'll find that if we define this array as being an array of strings, the definition for zero for a string turns out to be null. Much more useful is array.init. We can create our month end dates example using array.init. First argument of array.init is the number of elements to create. Then we have a lambda function. Now because i will start at zero in this case, we're going to need to add one to it to get the month, which we use here. And the logic thereafter is very similar. And we don't yield a value, we simply return a value from the lambda function. And as before, we get a fairly verbose output, but it clearly contains the last day of each month. Finally, we can create an array from any other i enumerable using array.ofseek. If I enumerate the contents of my temp directory, you'll see that that enumeration is an i enumerable, a generic one of string. Let's just try running that. And you'll see we return an enumerable, but we don't actually get any specific results because we haven't enumerated the enumerable. However, if we then send that to array.ofseek and then run that, we get the actual contents of my C temp directory.